Welcome back, everyone to Yusuf Reacts. Today, we're diving into the world of espionage, impossible stunts, and some classic 90 seconds action. We're breaking down the original 1996 mission, Impossible, the movie that turned Tom Cruise into an iconic action star and kickstarted a franchise that still thrills us today. So, grab your spy gear, because this mission starts now. It all starts in Prague. Ethan Hunt, played by the one and only Tom Cruise, is part of an IMF team tasked with a delicate operation. Of course, things don't exactly go as planned, and within minutes, Ethan's whole team falls apart in one explosive night. And just like that, we're thrust into the murky world of deception and double agents. Director Brian D. Palma brings an atmosphere of paranoia that makes you question. Everyone's motive is something straight out of a Cold War thriller. Who could forget that moment? The exploding aquarium scene. Cruz gives us one of the most unforgettable stunts in 90s. Cinnamarining out of a high-end restaurant as thousands of gallons of water come crashing down. It's a perfect introduction to the kind of intense, practical stunts that have become the franchise's trademark. Now let's talk about the Langley heist the scene that truly defines mission, impossible. With a near-silent, tension-filled infiltration of CIA headquarters. We see Ethan Hunt dangling mere inches from the floor, trying to steal classified data. The sweat dripping, the deafening silence seabirthing about this scene is pure suspense. Brian D. Palma masterfully crafts this sequence using almost no sound, amplifying every single movement and breath. Tom Cruise, as usual, did much of this stunt work himself, and his commitment pays off in this iconic, nail-biting moment. Of course, we can't talk about Mission, impossible without mentioning the finale. The high-speed train chase, featuring Hunt clinging to the side of a speeding TGV. While battling the rogue agent Jim Phelps played by John Voight's action at its finest, it's got everything, stunts, twists, and even a helicopter inside a tunnel. It's over the top, but in the best possible way. Let's not forget, this is 1996, with minimal CGI. That practical stunt work, the in-camera effects, and Cruz's dedication make these action sequences so memorable, even today. The supporting cast is also a big reason why the film works so well. From being Rames Cool as Ice Luther Stickle to Emmanuel Bart's enigmatic Claire, they all add layers to the intrigue. But it's John Voight's portrayal of Jim Phelps the mentor turned traitor that gives this movie its emotional core. It's a bold move that had longtime fans of the original TV series stunned. This was a story of betrayal, trust, and the realization that not everything is as it seems. And for Ethan Hunt, it was a trial by fire the impossible mission that transformed him into the character we know today. With Mission, Impossible, Brian D. Palma mixed 60 seconds spy drama with 90 seconds blockbuster action. The result? A film that redefined the genre and gave us one of the most enduring action heroes of all time. An American agent, under false suspicion of disloyalty, must discover and expose the real spy without the help of his organization. Based on the hit television series, Jim Phelps' John Voight was sent to Prague for a mission to prevent the theft of classified material. His wife Claire Emanuel Bart and his trusted partner Ethan Hunt Tom Cruise were members of Phelps' team. Unfortunately, something went horribly wrong and the mission failed, leaving Ethan Hunt the seemingly lone survivor. After he reported the failed mission, Kidridge Henry Cherney, the head of the agency, suspects Ethan of being the culprit for the failed mission. Now, Ethan uses unorthodox methods which includes the aid of an arms dealer, going by the name Max Vanessa Redgrave to try to find who set him up and to clear his name. Ethan Hunt Tom Cruise is an agent of an impossible missions force IMF team led by Jim Phelps John Voight. The team assembles for a mission in Prague to prevent us diplomat from selling the NOC list a list of all covert agents in Eastern Europe. The mission goes wrong with Hunt the sole survivor. Fleeing the scene, Hunt meets with Eugene Kittredge Henry Cherney, the CIA-based director of the IMF, at a cafe. 
Hunt learns from Kittredge that a mole, codenamed Job, has infiltrated the INF. And the operation was meant to ferret Job out by allowing him to acquire the NOC list and attempt to sell it to Max, an illegal arms dealer known for corrupting IMF agents. The NOC list in Prague was fake, the real list being held in CIA headquarters in Virginia. With Hunt the sole survivor, the CIA believes he is the mole. Hunt realizes this and then runs. Hunt returns to IMF safe house in Prague to find Claire Phelps Emmanuel Burke, Jim Phelps' wife, also survived. Ethan begins correspondence with Max Vanessa Redgrave, explaining that the NOC list was a fake and offering to deliver the real NOC list in exchange for the identity of the mole. Max agrees to the deal and offers Ethan a cash advance, which Ethan uses to assemble a team of blacklisted or disavowed intelligence agents, including computer expert Luther Stickle being Reims and pilot Franz Krieger Jean Reno. The new team infiltrates the CIA in Langley and successfully steals a copy of the full NOC. Kittredge has arrested Hunt's mother and then traces Hunt through the phone. Hunt finds that Jim is alive. Phelps says that Kittredge is the mole. Hunt piecing together the clues he discovered leading up to his operation and realizes that Phelps is the mole, Job. The next day, Max and Ethan arrange to meet aboard the TGV en route to Paris, with Claire and Luther aboard to provide backup. Kittredge is also aboard. Having recently arrived in London and received tickets for the TGV and a video watch from Hunt. In the train, Ethan delivers the supposed NOC list to Max, who directs him to the luggage compartment to find his money and job. Max then attempts to transmit the NOC list to a server, an operation. Hindered by Luther, who activates a jamming device to prevent the upload. Claire, observing Kittredge's presence aboard the train, vacates her seat. And meets with Phelps in the luggage car, confirming her part in the conspiracy. A silent Phelps slowly peels away his mask, revealing himself as Ethan. Suddenly, the real Phelps appears, armed and demanding the NOC list money. Ethan surrenders it before pulling out a pair of glasses. He slides them over his eyes, activating the camera inside and transmitting Phelps's image to Kittredge, proving beyond doubt that Phelps is still alive. Phelps, now revealed as the traitor, shoots Claire and then subdues Ethan before escaping to the roof of the train, where Krieger, also a traitor, waits to extract him with a helicopter. Ethan recovers and follows Phelps, impeding his efforts to escape and tethering Krieger's helicopter to the train as it heads into the channel tunnel. The fight continues, with the helicopter now following the train inside the tunnel. The two fights atop the wind-swept train before Phelps disconnects the helicopter from the train and attempts to escape. Ethan follows, leaping onto the helicopter's landing skids and attaching explosive gun to the windshield. The ensuing explosion kills Phelps and Krieger, with Ethan narrowly escaping. Kittredge, now in possession of the NOC list and Max's true identity, reinstates Luther as an IMF agent and drops his investigation against Ethan, who resigns from the IMF. As Ethan FLIs home, a flight attendant approaches him and through a coded phrase asks if he's ready for another mission. And that's where it all began. Tom Cruise's Ethan Hunt has gone on to face many impossible missions since, but there's something truly special about the first. So, let me know in the comments which mission, impossible movie is your favorite, and what's your favorite Ethan Hunt moment. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more movie breakdowns just like this. Until next time, remember this message will self-destruct in 5 seconds.